everyone. I am very excited to have the opportunity to introduce to you Aaron Campbell. Uh, he's been contributing to WordPress for 17 years now and was one of the folks to personally invite me into the community. And so I'm, I'm extremely grateful. And I, I think that it connects really well with the, the topic that he's going to talk today, which, which is about uh, building reputation and leveraging that to, uh, to help your life and to help your career. Um, one of the, uh, he is also the, uh, in addition to doing reputation building, he is the director of product at A2 Hosting, and he enjoys driving off-road high-performance UTVs with his son. And I, I find that to be pretty cool, so if you want to ask him about that afterward. But... Um, Without any further ado, please help me welcome Aaron Campbell. Thank you. Um, my career has been fairly long, as you may have gotten from the fact that I've been doing WordPress for 17 years, but my career has actually been about 25 years long. Um, and through that time, it's definitely grown and progressed quite a bit. Um, but I've also had a few big pivots along the way. I started off as a developer and moved over into owning and running my own web development company for about 15 years. Um, and then into running a WordPress product for another company and then over into the security space where I led the WordPress security team for a couple years, and finally into hosting where I've been for the last uh, about seven and a half years. And through that process of kind of growing and progressing forward, I began to recognize this thing that helped me along the way. This thing that I would eventually come to understand and start calling reputation. And at first, I mostly learned about it and learned about how to build it through the successful times in my career. When something good would happen, I'd be like, oh, I want more of that. I should, I should investigate and figure out what that was. Later... I would learn the value of looking back at my mistakes at the tough times, at the times where uh, growth was kind of non-existent and learn from those as well and really build a better picture of what reputation was, how I could build it. And eventually, I would even learn to purposefully leverage it to achieve my goals rather than just sort of... Um, benefit from it passively. But it was really during the big pivots in my career that I really noticed the, the, the real power of reputation and what it could do for me. And I want to bring everybody along with me today on that journey of learning, um, take you through my story, how I figured all this out, and hopefully learn from my successes and my mistakes. I'll share some of those too. Um, to help everybody understand how they can build their reputation, how you can build your reputation, how you can leverage it to achieve your goals. And my story might start a little bit earlier than you might think. This is me about 30 years ago, 12 years old. Um, and when I look at this picture, the thing that really stands out to me, aside from the obvious, like amazing hair and like really old three and a half inch floppies on the computer behind me, what really sticks out to me is the goofy grin. And the reason is because it's real. That's not my like smile for the camera smile. That's not what you saw in like school photos at that time or anything like that. What this smile in this picture means is I just wrote this screensaver and it works. I was super into technology. I loved computers. I loved learning about them. I really enjoyed making them do the things that I wanted them to do. And the reason that I wanted to jump back to here to start my story is because that very real enjoyment that I got from working with computers played a pretty significant role in my successfully building my reputation and succeeding in this space. 
And so even though I didn't understand it at the time, I kind of lucked into my very first success toward building my reputation right at the very beginning of starting my career. Because just a handful of years after this, when I started as a developer, I was doing something that I enjoyed. And the reason that that's important is because building reputation takes work. It takes time, it takes effort. I wish that I was able to offer you just a magic solution that just made it super easy, but I'm not. I'm offering you a framework that works, but it takes time and effort that you have to invest to make it work. And as I looked back through my career to put together this talk, I recognized that there were some pretty rough times that I don't know if I'd have been able to make it through or at least make it through as successfully if I didn't really enjoy what it was that I was doing. And don't get me wrong, I don't think that your job needs to be your primary source of enjoyment or fulfillment. But I do think that doing something you enjoy can make it easier to succeed, make it easier to build a reputation in that space. And I would love to say that I just started off with a big success and hit the ground running, but that wouldn't be very realistic. Um, because right at the very beginning of my career, I also made a really big mistake that I would end up struggling with for several years. Um, see, I had planned on going into computer networking. I had got my Cisco certifications. I had trained under people that did that. I was looking for a job as a network engineer. And while I was looking, I was helping my dad out with his company that had been growing and was kind of outgrowing some of their manual processes and they really needed to computerize to be able to continue growing. My dad's not very technical, so I said, well, while I'm looking for a job, I'll help you out. And so I set up all their computers and spent a bunch of time looking through all kinds of software packages with my dad to try to identify the one that would help him run his growing company. And none of them really fit. So I looked at him and I said, well, I'll just build you one. And that is how I became a developer. Like that was, that was it, that one little phrase, well, I'll just build you one, that was it. I really had no idea what I was getting into. It's not that I'd never written code, I had definitely done some of that, but I'd certainly never architected software that would run a growing business. But I dove in, and there is a whole nother story there that I will not regale you with today, but the really, really short version is, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it more than being a network engineer, so much more that I said I should do that instead, and I went and got a job as a developer. And as much as I do think it's important to do what you enjoy, to do something that you're passionate about, my problem, my mistake, was going into it with no plan, no goals, no direction, all of my plan and goals and everything had been about something else, but this was more fun, I was gonna do this instead. And the reason that was such a big mistake is because you wanna be able to build your reputation with purpose. You wanna build it strategically to help you achieve your goals, but if you don't have goals to achieve, you can't strategically build your reputation to help you get there. So there I was in my late teens and all the way up into my early 20s, trying to build a career, but really with no, no plan, no goals, no direction. And we're gonna come back to the plan thing a little later in my story when I get it figured out. But thankfully, at this time in my life, um, what I maybe lacked in planning, I, I kind of made up for in sheer energy. Um, has anybody ever used a, a bottle rocket like this? Yes, they're 
they're fantastic. Um, you light the fuse, you get this satisfying little tss, and it eventually lights the firework, and you get the and it's so cool. There's so much energy in that little thing. Uh, that was me. I had, I had all that energy. And everything that makes a bottle rocket a firework is in that little yellow printed part at the end. The propulsion, the, the sound it makes, the color it gives off, the explosion, it's all in there. That was me. Tons of energy. But do you see the long red stick hanging out the back of both of these? It's boring. It's just that. It's a stick. It's a little wooden stick. Seems innocuous, but it's critically important to the functionality of this firework because it gives it direction. It's what makes it go where you want it to go. And so if this bottle rocket was me in my early career, this red stick is what I was missing, a plan, goals, something to give me direction. And if you remove that stick and light one of these, and I cannot stress this enough, do not do this. Don't say, Aaron told me to try it out. That's not the case. But if you do, it still has just as much energy, but it just kind of randomly spins all around. It spins the same amount of energy as it would normally take to go 20 meters into the air and explode, but instead it just randomly spins and, and makes almost no progress at all. That was me. I, I had no stick. I was, I was putting out all that effort, all that energy, um, but no, no real progress. And very early, I started my own company. I started freelancing, and so that's, that's what I was doing. I was about to have a run-in with this amazing thing called reputation, but I wasn't quite there. I wasn't seeing it because I was just focused on the next job and the next job and the next job because getting work was hard. And I look back at that time and I think that should have been exhausting, but I recognized that I really enjoyed what I was doing. I enjoyed it so much that I was determined to make it work. I wanted to, so I just kept find the next job, do the work, find the next job, do the work, find the next job, do the work, expending all that energy until finally there was a bit of a breakthrough. Someone came to me with work. They said, we'd seen some work that you'd done before. We have budget, we have a project that's very much like one of those. We think you're the right person, can you do it? I was like, yes, yes. It was my first glimpse, looking back, of reputation, even though I didn't understand it at the time. And it was amazing. It was like, oh, like clouds parting, rainbow coming down. I think there were unicorns in the background. It was amazing. And I wanted more of that. I recognized that as a success almost immediately. And you know how I said I started out by learning just from my successes? I recognized that and I said, I need to figure out what happened here. Because hunting down work, that is the, that's the worst part of what I do. Doing the work, that's the fun part. And so I wanted more of that. And I should have had a big, big breakthrough here. It was right there in front of me, but I didn't really recognize what the, like the whole of reputation was. I didn't see the big picture. So instead of having another major success, I made another little mistake that would haunt me for a little while. I thought that the reason this customer came to me was just because of my portfolio. They had seen my work, so they came to me, it, it, the portfolio must be the magic thing, I just need more of that. And I wasn't completely wrong. Your portfolio, your resume, that's all part of your reputation. If you imagine building your reputation like filling a big tub of water, uh, you can start to fill it by focusing on your portfolio or your resume. It's like putting one small hose in there and it's adding a little bit of water it's good, but you're, you're missing out on so much. And I missed out on so much because I got absolute tunnel vision 
on building my portfolio. I thought that was going to be the magic thing that was going to really get customers to be coming to me again and again and again. And so I just kept at that. Again, I had tons of energy, so that was good. But um, flash forward to 2007, where something really significant happened to me. Um, my company had been growing really slow, but I had moved over to using WordPress. And I was building a project for a client. I ran into a bug. A bug in WordPress that I couldn't just work around. I had to fix it by changing WordPress core. And so I did, because I wanted to deliver the project to the client. I gave it to them. They loved it. But I fell into a trap because as soon as they updated that WordPress site, it overwrote my changes, and I had to fix it again. And then at the next update, I had to fix it again. And no client wants to pay you to fix the same thing over and over and over again. So I decided I needed to go fix this at the source. I needed to figure out how to fix it in WordPress. And if you do the math, you'll know that 17 years ago, like, uh, like, I, like, was, like I was introduced with, was 2007. This was my first contribution to WordPress core. It's OK. You don't have to understand the code. It's not significant to the story, uh, other than the fact that this contribution ultimately led me to being able to fix my second mistake and break me out of that tunnel vision. Because once I got this fix put into WordPress and that WordPress release went out, hundreds, maybe thousands of people were using some of my code. This was a long time ago. Um, and that felt really good. And in the process, I had also met a number, of, a number of other people that were kind of like the same kind of geek that I am. And we meshed really well. And I thought that was fun. I wanted to keep working with them. So I kept contributing to WordPress just because I enjoyed it. So now I was expending energy building my company, trying to get customers. And I was also expending energy contributing to WordPress just because it was fun and I enjoyed it. But after about a year, something really interesting happened. And it took a year because building reputation takes time and effort. And I didn't recognize that I was building reputation at that time, but I was. And after about a year, I started seeing some customers get referred over to me from other people that I had worked with in the WordPress project. But it wasn't because of my portfolio. And that was the magic thing, right? That was what brought customers to me so that I didn't have to chase them down. But this came, these were customers that hadn't seen my portfolio, being referred to me by people who hadn't seen my portfolio. They had seen my reputation, not my por portfolio, and that was enough for them. And the reputation that they saw was the part where I had been working to help build this thing for other people, where maybe I had helped put a feature in WordPress and worked alongside them. And suddenly I realized that I could get this thing that I wanted, this, the customers coming in, I could build this reputation. It's a, it's a much bigger thing than just my portfolio. I can look outside my work and find ways of benefiting my work. And that was a light bulb moment. That got me out of that tunnel vision, and I started looking for what are the other ways that I can build my reputation. And I kept contributing to WordPress core. That was another hose going into that, that tub and filling it up. And I started releasing WordPress plugins. That was another hose. And I started speaking at events. That was another hose. And I just kept looking for that. And I started to see so much growth so fast. It was amazing. And those are the areas where I, as a developer, found to grow my reputation outside my work. And those ways may be really different for you as you try to grow your reputation to accomplish your goals. But definitely take some time to think about what are the things outside of my portfolio, outside of my resume, not at work, but that can also help me achieve my goals. And because things started growing so fast, 
I saw so much work coming in that I, I couldn't do it all. I needed to pass some along to other people. And that sort of pushed me into my next success, which was finally making a plan and setting some goals. Because I realized that I needed to have a way of deciding what work I should keep and what work I should pass on. And before I get too deep into what my plan looked like, I want to pause for a second and talk about what it means when I say make a plan, set some goals. Because a lot of people get stuck on this point. They feel like this needs to be a big thing, a big plan, a, uh, you know, a career map, a business plan. It can be very simple. All you need to do is sit down and ask yourself, what do I want? What is it that I am trying to get? What am I trying to achieve? And write it down. We're going to explain why it's so important to write it down in a little bit. But write it down um, and be honest. Like, these, this is what you want. It's, there's no right answer to this. There's no one thing that everybody should be wanting. What is it that you're trying to accomplish? For me, at this time in my life, I really wanted to own my own company. I wanted to make lots of money. I wanted to not be tied down to any one location. I wanted to be able to work from wherever I was. And when it comes to choosing work, I wanted bigger projects because that let me spend more time writing the code and building the thing and less time with the customer, which was the part that I didn't care for as much. And so now I'd, I'd built reputation. I'd made a plan, so I had some direction, a, a place to point that... Um, that bottle rocket, right? I finally added that stick. It was so exciting. Um, and I was enjoying the benefits of my reputation, but only passively. I wasn't really leveraging it. And I'll never forget when I learned the value of leveraging my reputation because I really disliked it. <laughs> I, it was a hard lesson for me to learn. It was a tough one for me. But if we jump ahead to 2010, my business had been growing a lot. And I merged it with two other companies that were also doing well in the space, and we were focused on enterprise-level clients. So we were writing all kinds of proposals. And one of my partners, they wanted to change a section of our proposal that talked about our company. This is our company, this is what we do, these are the clients that we've worked with, that kind of thing. And broaden it out to really highlight our whole reputation as a company and as partners in the company individually. I wanted to talk about things like uh, other tools that we built, um, uh, places that we had spoke, um, WordPress releases that we had led, those kinds of things. And I didn't like that idea. It was awkward. It was uncomfortable. I think that I kind of felt like it was bragging, and I didn't care for it. But they were persistent, and I didn't really have a good solid argument against it because there was no, nothing inaccurate, no lies there. So I let them make the change, as uncomfortable as it was. And much to my disappointment, but also excitement, it made a really big difference in the percentage of those per, uh, proposals that turned into signed contracts. And so suddenly, I was leveraging my reputation. It took me a little while to come around to really enjoying doing that, but someone at that time told me something that I have since learned to embrace, which was that if you've put in the work, the time, the effort to build that reputation, you've done all those things, you've invested your time, that's yours. Taking credit for something that you actually did, that's okay to do. Um, and so now I, was, I, I had built the reputation, spent all the time cultivating it, and was actually leveraging it, putting it out there purposefully. Once you've built the reputation, that's what you need to do next. Start putting it out there purposefully. But I really hadn't seen the peak of the power uh, of reputation. But a few years later, things changed really dramatically for me personally, outside of work. 
And this is why. These are my grandparents. Um, they had long since retired at this time. They'd moved out to Oklahoma to be with my parents in their later years. And then my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. And my grandma started having real serious heart issues. And after open heart surgery on grandma and my grandpa having a significant decline, my parents didn't think that they were going to be able to continue caring for my grandparents on their own. Thankfully, I had been very adamant that I did not want to be tied down to any one location. I had built my, my, my reputation and directed my career accordingly. And so in middle of 2013, me and my family, we up and moved to Oklahoma to help take care of my grandparents. But about si as great as that was, about six or eight months into that, I was not doing so well. I was really struggling because um, I was trying to run a growing company that was bringing on employees and have a family and be a caretaker for my grandparents, and it was too much. But thankfully, I had learned my lesson before. I knew where I needed to start if I was going to make some changes. So I sat down and I asked myself this question, what do I want? This, by the way, is you all's homework. You're going to go away. You're going to ask yourself this question. What do I want? You're going to write it down. This time, my list was really different. Um, the most important things were being there for my family, taking care of my grandparents. Owning my own company had fallen so far down the list, that just wasn't important anymore. I still wanted to make money, but mostly just to sustain the, my ability to be out there taking care of them. And it didn't matter if I was locked into a location as long as it was that location, because I had no intention of leaving. And my two big takeaways from that, the first is really important for all of us here. My plan, my goals were really out of date. And that was not good. My stick for my bottle rocket was pointed where I had wanted to be before, but what I wanted had significantly changed. And so ever since then, I have been very proactive about sitting down and asking myself this question regularly. I actually have a quarterly calendar reminder that has me do this. And so the reason you need to make sure that you write down your list when you do this is so that you can go back to it, update it regularly, keep it in line with what it is that you want because as you change, your goals change as well. And the second thing that I really noticed uh, that I took away from that was that I was gonna need to make some really big changes. Um, thankfully, reputation to the rescue. Uh, and I say thankfully because I was a little scared at this point um, because I thought that the thing I needed to do in order to accomplish my new set of goals was work for somebody else because my top goals had nothing to do with work. I needed more time outside of work and that's hard to do as a business owner. But working for someone else was scary because I had not done that in 15 years and I wasn't sure I was incredibly employable. Um, and I definitely knew that who I worked for would be very important to my ability to actually succeed in that, in working for someone else. So I sent out some feeler emails to a few places that I thought I would be able to work. And... Um, I got not just responses, but offers back. And I was able to shift over and work running a product inside of a small WordPress company called iThemes. And that was not because of my resume. My resume was almost empty at that time, self-employed, 15 years. It was not because of my portfolio, because I started running a product. There weren't any products in my portfolio. That was because of my reputation. That was because of that whole picture. It, sure, maybe a little bit my portfolio, but also my activity in the WordPress project, things that I had built, 
talks that I had given, people that I had helped, that all came into play in allowing me to make that pivot. One last quick thought. Um, things were a little different building my reputation after then inside of other companies. And it's important to note that your reputation is not the same as your company's reputation. And I want to make sure to highlight this because just because you may be in a company that has a good reputation or is in a good spot, you may be benefiting from that, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't still be building and cultivating your own reputation because that goes with you when you leave. I thought that my reputation and my companies were the same, but, um, but mine came with me when I left. And so to do that, even from inside a company, um, do what you enjoy, make a plan, set goals, give yourself that, the stick for your bottle rocket, aim it, look beyond just your portfolio, look outside your, your work, and then enjoy the benefits. And I think that unfortunately I have taken up all of my time, so I'm not sure that there actually is time for question and uh, Q&A, but I will be around and would love to talk to you all about this. <laughs> Thank you so much, Aaron. Thank you. Mm. We do have time for Q&A. Awesome. When I got the told times up, I was like, time for oh. Q&A. So, uh, awesome. Does anyone have some questions they would like to ask? Hi, um, my name's Helen, and um, I wanted to ask, like, Nowadays, there's like so much going on, so much noise, social media, whatnot. What's the difference, do you think, between the idea of building reputation, which what you've described is very much, I would say, cultivating in a very sort of personalized way, to today, where it's sort of, I want to say, the sort of TikTok quick, you know, sort of, you know, videos out there. So, do you have a particular take on that? I I think that there's a difference between reputation and kind of popularity, I guess. And I think that if you build quick and it's, it's more of this popularity following, there are definitely some benefits to that. There are things that um, that, that can really accomplish, but this broader picture that's gonna really carry you along as, as quickly as you can build favor, you can lose it in those spaces. And if you are slowly, methodically, purposefully cultivating this reputation for yourself, it stays. I think that's the biggest difference. Hi, um, can you talk a little bit more about how you leveraged your reputation in terms of painting that holistic picture? And what are some of the, I guess, potential mistakes that you looked out for along your way? Yeah, uh, as far as leveraging my reputation, I think that the big thing that I learned there when I was talking about the, the proposals was that, um, not always is your reputation just obviously visible to everybody. Sometimes you have to put it out there. This is me, this is what I've built, this is what I've done, this is who I am and why you should be interested in working with me or hiring me or whatever it is. Um, and proactively putting your reputation out there, um, at least for me at first especially, was really hard. It, it felt really awkward to do. Um, but that difference between just passively letting it happen and actively leveraging it by putting it out there um, made a noticeable difference. Um, and, and yes, in like those proposals for going out to uh, these enterprise customers, the, the percentage change was very measurable in how many accepted those. And later, as I was um, 
trying to move into these different spaces in, in hosting, in security, in product. Um, it was the same thing. It was me having to really actively put that out there. And even for my, for my most recent role, sitting down with the company that I was going to be moving over to work with and talking about everything that I just, that I just referenced, uh, things that I've done in the WordPress community, things, you know, talks that I have given. Um, it feels weird for me to talk about those actively, but it makes a big difference. How did I get over the hurdle of it feeling awkward? And I don't think I did. It still feels awkward, but I do it anyway because I recognize that it's valuable. Um, I wish that it didn't feel awkward. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think, I think it's okay to just be like, hey, this is an awkward thing for me to do, but it's valuable, so I'm going to do it anyway. Hey, being up here on stage and talking in front of you all, this is awkward for me too, but, uh, <laughs> but I do it because I think it's important. Anybody else? No? Uh, well, what did you do to um, proactively leverage your reputation? Like, did you send cold mails to, to companies and do you proactively meet in people in this community and uh, so how exactly did you do? Yeah, I, I think that that comes back to this, this last question where um, I, I guess it depends on what it is that I'm trying to like proactively leverage my reputation to accomplish. Uh, when I was working at my own business, that w what I wanted to accomplish was getting clients, getting those signed enterprise contracts. And so the way that I proactively did it was including it in those proposals to them. But um, in other ways, if it's more about, uh, like now, one of the things that I do is build partnerships with plugins in the space um, for the company that I work for. And so sometimes just getting meetings with those people means proactively reaching out and kind of leveraging my name, my own personal reputation to get those meetings. And so, yes, yeah, sometimes it's just reaching out to someone with that whole context, as awkward as it may be to do, uh, including that so that you can achieve the thing that you're trying to achieve. We got, a, got another follow-up. Um, sorry. So, what along your way though? Has there have you ever looked back and be, and be like, oh, that was suboptimal way of leveraging reputation. I could have done it better. Um, like mis not mistakes, but room for improvement or something that you were not happy with. Yeah, I think that. Um I think that as I look back, the ones that stand out the most are the times where I didn't really fully put it out there. Like I, I, it, it was less like, hey, I tried to use my reputation and it just you know, didn't work. Like, okay, that's fine. I'm not, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not perfect. I'm not the right fit for everybody. It's more those times where I think that I could have if I'd have given them the broader picture, then maybe they would have seen that I was the right person, but I only gave them this small view of what I had to offer. I only showed them my resume or my portfolio, and I didn't really get the chance to give them the full context. I think that's the place that I most often fall off, and, and I think that that's because it sometimes feels like I would like to give as little as I have to, to achieve the thing. Um, but that's not always the right way to put it. And so I think that that's the mistake that I most often make. Okay, so as you're working on several spaces, like uh, your client work, 
and your contribution work plus your family life. Uh, have you found any sweet spot between these three so that you can manage together? That is extremely difficult to do, yes. Um, I think, again, I think that some of that comes back to the fact that I enjoyed the work parts of it so much. And so I, um, I, I, I was okay with sinking a lot of time into that. Um, but that balance between how much do you, you know, foster your, your personal life, how much do you, you know, how much energy do you give to your work life, finding that balance is extremely difficult. I think my biggest thing as I was putting this all together is recognizing just how much that balance changed over the years for me. When I was younger, a huge percentage of that balance was just over on the work side. And now, a much larger part of it is over on the family side to feel like I'm balanced. I think that that's just different for each of us in different parts of our lives. Um, and it's, it's okay to just be like, hey, uh, I'm going to do as much as I can in this area because this other one needs attention too. Um, and then just trying to be good about actually actually doing that. That's, that's maybe the hardest part. I'm asking this question as someone who's a bit social media averse. Mm. I'm curious how Twitter, for example, fits into this, if at all. Yeah, uh, you know, for a while, I would use those social channels also as part of kind of building my, my reputation. Um, really about kind of putting it out there and, and letting people see that I was an, an expert in an area, that I knew what I was talking about, if you will. Um, I have become a little bit more social media averse over time as well, mostly just because I find it very easy to spend way too much time on it. Um, like finding that balance can be very difficult. Uh, so I don't do that as much anymore, but that was how I used it um, at various points along the way. It was less about the, the viral or building a following and more about the establishing myself as an expert in the area that I wanted to be an expert in. All right. <clears throat> I think that is the, the, the last, the, we are out of time, unfortunately, for questions, but please feel free to... Come uh, find me. Exactly yes. that. Thank you so much, Aaron. I have a small gift for you. Oh, yes. <laughs> Running off the stage. I almost editor. forgot too. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Yes.